More than 43 million people, or about 15% of the nation's population, rely on private domestic wells for drinking water. In Arizona, there are more than 100,000 domestic wells providing water to an estimated 120,000 households, or about 5% of the state's population. This video introduces you to the types of aquifers found in Arizona and the aquifer characteristics that may impact the quantity and quality of your well water. Prior to drilling a new well or deepening or modifying an existing well, a person must file a notice of intent to drill with the Arizona Department of Water Resources. Forms are submitted by the licensed well drilling contractor to obtain authorization to drill different types of wells. The Arizona Groundwater Management Act of 1980 identifies wells having a pump capacity of not more than 35 gallons per minute as exempt wells because they are not required to report how much water they pump. Other than requiring the filing of the notice of intent to drill with the state and compliance with Arizona Department of Water Resources well construction standards, the well owner can site their well anywhere beyond the 100 foot minimum setback from any component of a septic system. Your well driller will recommend an appropriate location for your new well. Domestic wells equipped to pump 35 gallons per minute or less are sufficient for most household needs. The well driller will inspect the drill cuttings to identify the aquifer type and determine the design of the well. Different types of drilling rigs are used to drill domestic wells, such as the air rotary method shown here. An aquifer is an underground geologic formation capable of producing usable quantities of water to a well. Water is held in the spaces between the sand and gravel or in the cracks and fractures of rock. The aquifer is either consolidated or unconsolidated. Here is an example of an unconsolidated aquifer from a road cut along Route 77 near Mammoth, Arizona. Here you can see that the aquifer is made up of poorly sorted sand and gravel mixed with silt and clay. This type of aquifer predominates across the basin and range of the Arizona desert and provides water for the cities of Phoenix, Tucson, Sierra Vista, and others. Basin and range aquifers are found across central and southern Arizona and result from the erosion of rocks from higher elevation mountains into lower elevation basins as shown here. The larger boulders and cobbles are deposited closer to the source near the mountain fronts. The finer grain materials are transported further down slope with silts and clays commonly found in the center of the valleys. Some of the boulders and cobbles shown here in this road cut are not very well rounded, meaning they have not been transported very far from their source. This basin fill sediment is not very well consolidated, meaning that it has not been cemented with caliche or compacted. Over time, this poorly sorted sediment could be eroded and redeposited becoming well sorted. This road cut near Mammoth, Arizona is an example of a well sorted aquifer material. Each layer of this aquifer represents a separate event like a winter storm or a monsoon that transported sand to this location. For scale, there are about seven to ten individual layers per inch. Wells located in aquifers of this type can provide sufficient water for most domestic needs. Consolidated rock aquifers may also yield sufficient water to support a domestic well. Rock aquifers include granites, basalts, sandstones, and limestones, like those found in the highlands of central Arizona and on the Colorado Plateau. Water in these aquifers is held only in the fractures and cracks of the rocks. The yield from a consolidated rock aquifer is dependent upon the number of fractures the well borehole intercepts. Yields can vary between a few gallons a minute at one location to a thousand gallons per minute a short distance away. This aquifer is highly fractured and if saturated could yield several hundred gallons per minute. Another type of consolidated aquifer would include the layered sedimentary rocks found on the Colorado Plateau. The water supply for Holbrook, Sholo, and St. John are from the rock aquifer known as the Coconino Sandstone. This aquifer is visible in many places on the Grand Canyon. Here's an example of a layered sandstone siltstone aquifer near Winkleman, Arizona. 
Again, the yield of a well drilled in this type of aquifer depends on the number of fractures and cracks the borehole intercepts. Here you can see where groundwater is draining from the rock in the upper corner of the image. The horizontal fractures separate layers called bedding planes. Each layer represents a cycle of time that could be decades or even centuries long. Coarse unconsolidated aquifer materials, as shown in the upper left side of this chart, would readily transmit water. Finer silts and clays, as shown on the lower left of this chart, do not transmit water as readily. The degree of sorting that takes place in an aquifer can affect its ability to transmit water also. Well-sorted sands could transmit water at a rate between three-tenths of a foot per day to 3,000 feet per day, depending on the grain size. Poorly sorted aquifers can have unpredictable yields, especially if you have gravel and sand mixed with silt and clay, as we see in this example. Groundwater flow through consolidated rock is equally unpredictable, as shown on the right-hand side of this chart. The Coconito sandstone, the major aquifer for the Colorado Plateau in Arizona, transmits water at a rate between one foot in 100 years to three feet per day. Fractured granite and basalt rock could yield water at rates up to 300 feet per day. This video is one of a series of four, introducing you to basic aspects of your domestic water supply well. This video is the result of a collaboration between the University of Arizona Cooperative Extension Service, the Water Resources Research Center, and the Arizona Water Well Association. Funding was provided by the Water Sustainability Program of the Arizona Technology Research Initiative Fund from the University of Arizona Superfund Research Program and the Cooperative Extension Signature Program Initiative.